Are you a coffee lover? Are you attracted to its flavorful aroma? Or are you fond of relishing its taste? Well, do you know that it takes a really long process of making coffee before you can enjoy sipping your favorite coffee? Coffee is generally planted as an intercrop for forest trees. From a steep hillside covered with coffee trees, farmers carry heavy bags after a long day's work, the red ripe coffee berries. Then, the berries will go through a series of steps to prevent its unwanted bitterness and to guarantee a great cup of coffee. Because its method of processing is the single most important factor contributing to the flavor profile of coffee, the process is really laborious and it takes ample patience and techniques. And because coffee has a lot of varieties with different characteristics, each of this involves different kinds of processing methods. The Philippine Center for Post-Harvest Development and Mechanization or FILMIC developed a post-harvest and processing system for coffee robusta, liberica, and arabica. These systems are being recommended to coffee growers and processors in the country. Three primary processing methods are practiced in producing green coffee beans. Wet method, which is adopted by Arabica coffee farmers, particularly from CAR or Cordillera Administrative Region. Natural or dry method, adopted by mostly growers of Robusta, Liberica, and Excelsa. And to a lesser degree, the semi-wet or popped natural method, which is adopted in areas when natural drying is a problem because of continuous rain. Coffee farmers with a variety of coffee beans have different kinds of post-harvest handling. Regardless of processing method, it is important to separate unwanted berries and other debris to maintain the quality of processed beans. Overripe and underdeveloped coffee berries must be separated by flotation method. When placed in water, ripe coffee berries sink, while overripe and underdeveloped coffee berries and other light impurities float in water. The coffee floaters are for internal or home consumption, while the sinkers are either dried using the natural process or can immediately be depopped using the popping machine. The natural method or dry process is commonly used in areas where rainfall is scarce and long periods of sunshine are available. Some researchers say that coffee produced from this method is heavy in body, sweet, smooth, and complex. The freshly picked berries are simply spread out on clean surfaces to dry in the sun. In order to prevent the berries from spoiling, they are raked and turned throughout the day, then covered at night, or if it rains, to prevent them from getting wet. Depending on the weather, this process might continue for several days for each batch of coffee until the moisture content of the berries drops to 11%. In rainy areas or season, an all-weather dryer developed by Filmic will be used to avoid very long periods of drying which predispose the coffee beans to mold attack and development of harmful toxins. It has a polyethylene cover with 4 to 6 mm thickness. The size can be tailor fitted to the volume or harvest dried at a given time. Then, dried berries are milled to remove the entire dried husk, the exocarp, mesocarp, and endocarp of dried berries using steel hauler. The steel hauler is an Engelberg type with 12 horsepower diesel engine and rated capacity of 300 kilograms per hour. Properly mature and dried berries will result to good quality green beans. After hauling, 
when not yet properly dried, the green coffee beans are further dried to 10% moisture content. The moisture content is measured using available moisture meters adopted for measuring both parchment and green beans. Before storing or roasting, the dried green beans are sorted and graded according to its size and weight, presence of brokens and other color imperfections, deceased beans, and foreign materials. The defective beans with unsatisfactory size, color, or that are otherwise unacceptable are removed. This include over-fermented beans, those with insect damage, or those that are unhulled. Meanwhile, majority of Arabica coffee farmers adopt the wet process. The wet process is being practiced in areas where coffee is valued for its perceived acidity. Coffee produced from this method is cleaner, brighter, and fruitier. In wet method processing, there are several actual steps involved. After separating the overripe and underdeveloped berries, the freshly harvested berries are passed through a pulping machine where the outer skin is separated from the bean. Traditionally, the pulping and the hulling are done manually by mortar and pestle or by the use of tools developed by farmers. But through the inventions of Filmic, a portable rubber bib pulper is used in the pulping small volume harvest of ripe berries. It has a capacity of 40 kilograms per hour and operated manually. For larger volume, an engine-powered pulper with 300 kg per hour capacity is available. The pulper separates the outer skin or pulp from the beans still covered with a sticky mucilage and parchment. Skins that are not separated and mixed with the wet parchment beans are removed using appropriate screens. After separation, the beans are placed in water-filled fermentation tanks or big plastic bags. They will remain in these containers for anywhere from 10 to 20 hours. The purpose of this process is to remove the slick layer of mucilage that is still attached to the parchment. While resting in the tanks, naturally occurring enzymes will cause this layer to dissolve. When fermentation is complete, the beans will feel rough rather than slick to touch. At the precise moment, the beans are rinsed and washed. They are then ready for drying down to 10% moisture content using the all-weather dryer. Once dried, these beans are referred to as dried parchment coffee. While waiting for the later harvest or for marketing or processing, dried parchment coffee at moisture content of 10 to 11% could be stored in gas-tight storage container or polypropylene bags for 9 months under ordinary conditions without quality deterioration. The parchment is dehulled to remove the parchment layer or endocarp using a coffee rubber roll huller specially designed for dry parchment coffee. It was 180 kg per hour capacity with 3 kW electric motor. Then, the beans are graded and sorted in preparation for temporary storage and or roasting. The third process is a semi-wet process or popped natural method. It is adopted by some farmers of Robusta, Liberica, and Excelsa coffee. The process includes the pulping of coffee cherries, but there is no fermentation. It is being practiced in areas where humidity is low and coffee with mucilage can be dried rapidly without fermenting. This process is promoted to facilitate drying. The newly harvested berries are pulped using the still beep coffee pulper, either the manual type or the engine driven. Then the wet parchment coffee beans are dried, sun drying or using the all-weather dryer. Dried parchment coffee are dehulled through the coffee rubber roll huller and eventually dried again to 10% moisture content before the sorting and grading process. 
Afterwards, the beans are stored and roasted. Roasting transforms green coffee into the aromatic brown beans. Depending on the desired flavor and aroma, a roaster can vary the roasting temperature and the time of exposure of the green beans. A medium dark brown roast can be achieved between 225 to 230 degrees Celsius. A roasting chamber temperature between 205 to 215 degrees Celsius is generally recommended. The coffee must be properly ground to get the most flavors in a cup of coffee. Grind the coffee depending on the desired texture of the consumers. How coarse or fine the coffee is, ground depends on the method by which the coffee is to be brewed. Coffee ground for use in an espresso machine is much finer than coffee which will be brewed in a drip system. The best time to grind the beans is right before making the coffee. Now the coffee is ground, it is then ready for brewing. After the many processes that the beans have gone through since the day they were hand-picked and the long way they have traveled to your kitchen, prepare your coffee thoughtfully and enjoy it with pleasure because many people have been instrumental in bringing it to your cup. And always remember, learning coffee processing is not that easy. Our learning should be continuous and that there is always room to improve, to explore, and to innovate.